Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Very excited to have you here because today this episode features a galactic channel, Arcturian, and energy matrix healer. You'll want to stay tuned. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated, nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award and has been listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcast to listen to this year. Very humbled by all that. And I thank all of those outlets for recognizing the work that I do on this show. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and by Access Consciousness. They do beautiful energy work out into the world. If you would like to become a facilitator or take one of their classes or programs anywhere in the world, go to drdanehere.com or accessconsciousness.com. Tell them I sent you. <laughs> and I am Debbie Dashinger. I run a visibility media hub. What does that mean? That means that I've got a few pegs of visibility so you can get your being, your message out there into the world. The first thing I do is I'm a book writing coach and I do this through group sessions as well as through private sessions. The second leg of this is taking your book to a guaranteed international best-selling status and I do all the heavy lifting. The third is kind of fun and interesting. I produce anthology books. So if you're a coach or you have a business, you have clients, and you want to do an anthology book on a particular theme, come to me. I do it for you and your clients from beginning to end, and it is a sumptuous experience. All you do is bring aboard your clients to each write a chapter, and off we go for a magnificent writing experience. And the final frontier of the Visibility Hub is the ultimate visibility formula, which is where I teach people how to be interviewed on podcast and radio so they can have magnificent, massive results for their time and energy. And hey, I've got a special gift for you. If you would like to become more visible and learn how to do these things out in the world, I'm giving you templates and videos of instruction and fun. Go to debbiedashingercom slash gift. My gift to you, it's D-E-B-B-I, D as in David, A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R dot com slash gift. So our show today features somebody I've been following for a while. Her name is Viviane Chavette, an internationally recognized advanced Arcturian hybrid avatar. Vivian's healing practice and teachings inspire people to live in universal consciousness as sovereign divine beings. She specializes in multidimensional frequency healing, consciousness channeling, and soul matrix healing. Also, holographic body template upgrades. In 2013, Vivienne founded Infinite Healing from the Stars and did thousands of healing sessions with clients worldwide. Her first collaborative number one best-selling book, Wisdom of the Silver Sisters, Guiding Grace, is now available on Amazon. Vivienne worked as a hybrid consultant on J3 Films' second documentary, Extraordinary, The Seating. Vivian is also featured in J3 Films' award-winning third documentary, Extraordinary, The Revelations, which explores the historical significance of extraterrestrial presence in specific paradigms, including ascension. Vivian is the producer and co-host of the Infinite Star Connections podcast. If you'd like to learn more about her, go to infinitehealingfromthestars.com. And with that, I welcome Vivian to the show. It is so great to have you. Oh, thank you, Gabby. Thank you so much for having me. What a wonderful and powerful introduction. I really appreciate it. I feel your energy. You really convey the message so well. It's very inspirational. Very happy to be here. Ah, uh, thank you so much. And yeah, I feel like I've been a little obsessed with you ever <laughs> since I met you. It's true because I immediately, you know, look, you come with this moniker, advanced Arcturian hybrid. Okay, you know, and I meet people like this a lot. And, and that's not to say they're not for real, because I meet a lot of for real people in this space. What was different for me about you is you 
well, you're incredibly poised, first of all, but you have an air for me that lets me know you are definitely not fully from this planet. I know none of us really are. <laughs> We're all really hybrids. But you got that little zhuzh going on that really like something else outside of Earth, this tiny planet. And I love that about you. Um, do you get that a lot from people who say, you feel different, like not quite human? What a fantastic compliment, Debbie, mm. because, you know, coming from you, what's your experience? I know you work with thousands of people. You've worked countless of people getting their messages out there, book, publishing authors and so forth. For you to be able to feel the distinguishing energies about myself speaks volume. So did I receive this kind of remark that something about you? To many degrees, I would say this entire spectrum mm -hmm. of the light have received that to some degrees. More people um, have been feeling there's something different about you. Oh, here comes my galactic cat. <laughs> she loves to be in an interview with me. So that's hilarious. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my galactic uh, tigress peanut that we welcome to the show. Hi, peanut. Good to have you. Oh, yeah. She goes, I'm, I'm coming back again for a second round. Um, but this is something that has been always. <laughs> Thank you, honey. If you are the people, if you're listening to the podcast, you need to get over to youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. It is hilarious. This beautiful striped tail just traipsing across the screen back and forth. <laughs> no body that we can see yet. So. No, no, just that. That's her signature. She's famously known, not by now. Anything that I do, I can be in the middle of a meditation or a class or an interview and she decides I want to be part of this. Here's my signature. And then, you know, she loves to do that. And until I tell her, okay, honey, we saw you. Thank you very much for your energy. She's part Bengal, but she has uh -huh. this Bengal tiger energy in her. And she's very lion at the same time, very advanced. Mm -hmm. So, you know, very close with the lion. So that's why she's always doing that. Now she's settling in. Um, so speaking of I love this world energy, and we talk about my cat, which is, has this energy, but it's been a consensus overall. People who meet me, especially right now, where people access into higher consciousness, especially in person, people will say, wow, your energy feels very strong. Mm -hmm. There's something about your demeanor. There's something about your eyes, your expression. It's something that, something that echoes in me. It evokes something in me. And this is the way we convey. And the thing is, whether it's online, like we are right now, Debbie, or especially in person, if the thing that I do have my galactic group with me, uh, always, there's a lot of frequency that is being generated. And we are who we are. And especially in my case, um, even as a little girl, growing up, young adults, teenager, People would go like, there's something different about you. I mean, you look human, but at the same time, you look different. We can't put the finger on it. And it's just, we don't understand really what it is. But now people are more in a conscious understanding to be able to say, what is it? Who is it I am interacting with? And now I can understand where this is coming from, if that makes sense. So when we talk about you being an Arcturian hybrid avatar, what does that mean exactly? That's a great question. So what does it mean exactly is that we know that there's many different level of hybrids. Uh, look at the human race as a civilization so with a lot of DNA material that has come from countless groups of extraterrestrial groups that has contributed to the DNA or the human geome for evolutionary process. That's one aspect of it. There are different star seeds on the planet coming from a human form, but their DNA may have been tempered with or had it a strain or two or some material from their star family, which qualifies them as an aspect of hybrids. What we did in my case is that I'm a high priestess. So there's a holographic projection I'm from my high priestess consciousness directly from Arcturus and I've become, I accepted to create a physical vessel that will hold the maximum level of, of genetic material from my Arcturian. So we create a prototype and my physical body is truly a prototype. Mm 
we want to see. I want to be on the planet as opposed to stay on board the ship or working from conscious remote projection from Arcturus onto the earth. Not as effective because being here physically, I can have more direct impact on the consciousness, whether it's on the planet, into the grids, or working with people. It has a more direct impact. You can communicate with me, you can see, you can relate to me. I'm much more accessible than if I was just a projection coming from. So being a Octarian Advanced Prototype Avatar, it means that physically my body was engineered by the Octarians who are master in what they do. They are very advanced star civilizations. And we know they're one of the most advanced one, very, they've reached a level of mastery. And so we utilize our conscious technology to create a physical vessel that could be relatable for human beings. So I look the part, I speak the part, I act, I interact with people, friends, family, clients. And so, well, I know that at the soul level, I'm also an projection, a holographic projection from my high priestess self. So I always go back, back and forth and I can feel when I retract into the other aspect of myself, I see myself, I can feel when I go back in that consciousness. So it's complex. Yeah. And I, may I ask you, are you, are you saying when you go back into the high priestess self, is that aboard the ship? And is this an energetic go back or do you actually go back? It's all of the above. It's I physically go back, but I out of necessity so that my body can properly be regenerated in ways that I need. So, so I can, hmm. that's one aspect. The second aspect, it's also in etheric conscious form where I can be on board as well. I can be also back in Arcturus working with the Council of Elders, working with other consuls. So remember that we're a very complex being. We're holographic and multidimensional at the same time. So when you are at a level of consciousness, being able to project yourself in different timelines or different locations, it's easy because you understand the mastery behind it. You, it. you can have access to it. So for example, I'll give you an example of this, if I may. Yes, please. Right now we're having this amazing conversation, you and I, right? We're on your show live right now. But at the same time, there's an aspect of me that I know consciously I'm not on planet right now. I'm also off planet at the same time. So two lines, if you want, are going on all at once as I am speaking with you, interacting with you and the audience. That other aspect of me is also off planet at the same time. Now, Arcturians, it's very interesting because I'm reading reading books about this right now. So everything you're saying is so aligned and you can live for millions and millions of years uh, through regen regenesis. And are you engineered to live longer than a normal human? Yes, but not on this planet. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have reached a level of conscious assistive technology to regenerate our form. Now you have to think about, we're not talking about a human body designed to evolve on this earth, even though human beings are accessing to a higher dimensional state. We're talking about an Arcturian body. There's huge difference in our anatomy and the way we vibrate. Mm -hmm. So yes, we have reached that level. Yes, we can regenerate for thousands and thousands of years if we choose to. Or the soul can say, I'm going to move on beyond the physical incarnation. It's a choice that the soul has, but we can stay in the same body for thousands of years. I imagine the mastery behind it. It's phenomenal, phenomenal. So in my case, my body is designed to have a certain, how could I say that? And they show that to me, a certain duration, a length of, a life length, and on this planet, there's so much, so many years I'm going to stay here until the body go like, oh, I get, I reach a saturation, I can no longer function. And then I'm going to bring my body back to the ship and we're going to transform it into higher form. Yeah. But it's going to be possible for me because 
um, genetically engineered by the octarian. And so what does it mean as another implication to this is that I did not go through the same birthing process as humans do, meaning I was not born on the planet. This I was born on, on the ship. So you no know mother, father, no earth mother. Oh yeah, I have a mother. I have a mother. So explain so that. What do you mean by that? What oh, I mean that? Oh, you mean like in vitro sort of thing where they uh, they combine the DNA to create the embryo and then put it in your mother? It's a little bit more complex than that, but for the purpose of illustrating an image, I would say yes to some degree. It's done to a very conscious life matrix template and it's done, um, it would be too complex to explain everything and I wanna respect my mom as well. But the point I was making about that, Debbie, is that I was not born in a hospital and a house or I was not born directly on the earth plane. I was born on one of our main major um, mothership, one of our planetary ship that my father commands and to make sure that I was within our technology and our atmosphere to make sure the vessel would be viable. I see. And your mother is not from Earth or is from Earth? Yeah, but her body is from Earth, but she's a very advanced being herself. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Yeah. She's very gifted. Awesome. Great lineage. So I'm going to shift a little bit into healing because I know you offer a lot of different private and group healings and people who are interested can look at your website and more about that. I want to talk about one that I'm fascinated with, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique or known as QHHT. Now, I actually don't know much of anything about it, but it has been popping in my space a lot lately. And so now I'm like, okay, I have to pay attention. I understand it was developed by Dolores Cannon over decades of practice and hypnosis. I know it's very unique. And I know that um, obviously it's gaining popularity if it's coming up this much. Can you talk about when someone works with you, a QHHT session, what is that session like? And what is possible through QHHT? That's a great question. So like any a form of healing, there's a lot that is possible. But QHHT is very specialized in terms of bringing, you, bringing a client into the quantum, what I call the quantum field in that hypnosis state. So a session can take up to four hours. It has to be done in person in order to have the direct interconnections uh, between myself and the client. And it's, there's also preparation prior to this, meaning that we ask questions. We, there's, a, there's a whole procedure to bring the client in a way of reviewing aspect or maybe of their life, childhood, past marriage, relationship, womb, things that has been carried over and over and to say, you know what, I need to understand it from a different perspective and being able to resolve or better discover other aspects of myself. So QHHT brings the client in a very specific methodology to an altered state of relaxation, bringing the client into the quantum field in that hypnosis state, in a quantum hypnosis state, in order to visit whether it's past life or it can be parallel life. Mm. In some instances, I've seen future life that already has an overlapping effect on the life the client has. And what is really, for me, the pinnacle, the point of QHHT is that when we reach a certain summit or a certain level in the quantum field, that aspect of the client, what Dolores Kennett called the higher beings or the higher self or the higher part of them, and then I can see the dialogue shifting from, I see myself as a little girl in a field picking up flowers to we want her to understand that in this lifetime, she's here to discover her power. The dialogue comes to a third pronoun, to a third person. Mm -hmm. Now we know that it's not just the imagination, the lower mind mm -hmm. or the subconscious mind talking of the client is of something much infinite, bigger, infinite, more connected. 
And the answer that comes at that, end, at that moment, it's truly really my favorite part because the answer that comes, ties up, usually ties up so well with the journey that they went on. And can there be blockages? Yes, some people can be blocked at a way to go, oh, hypnosis doesn't work on me. I always say, this is beyond hypnosis. Think of it as a journey beyond the quantum field. It's a journey to the fabric of space and time. And sometimes just to present it this way, it helps to already release unconscious block around the word hypnosis or being able to tap into her potential. Yeah, I've heard some amazing stories of, you know, incredible healings of eyesight and persistent physical issues and otherwise. And that's what really intrigued me about this. So I think I hear you saying, Vivian, that somebody doesn't, you don't have to necessarily believe in hypnosis. You don't have to believe in past lives, concurrent parallel lives, multidimensionality, et cetera, but it works. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. There's no need to have those belief system in those background. It's just believe in your journey. Believe in that you are more. Believe that you are a soul. And just by approaching from that concept, the same thing when we do our signature the, uh, modality, which is the Octurn Energy Matrix Healing, we have access to multiple level of timelines, loops. We go everywhere. And whether the person is in accordance to their soul design, their soul blueprint, to heal from whether it's high sight, chronic lower pain, digestive issues. It can be something that is hooked in them through their history. And we can see that through the spinal column, like the history that is stored within the body. So when we do the transfer of octane frequency and dimensional energy into the body template, we work in a sense that the higher self and the supreme higher self is there to guide to see what is the most appropriate for that person, the lessons and also the growth for that person. We never interfere or prevent someone from experiencing what they need to. We're there to guide them in the process so they can achieve something infinitely bigger. If that makes sense. Yes, and have freedom. That's what I heard when you were saying, yes. and have freedom, like yes. the greatest gift of all, truly, whether it's health freedom, physical freedom, emotional freedom, career freedom, love, finances, life purpose. Freedom is, for me anyway, is everything. So that sounds pretty divine. It is divine because we always work in accordance to the sacred laws, you know, Sometimes people have a fear tells me, oh, well, I want to make sure the doctrine doesn't give me this or the doctrine won't remove this because you're going to cause something in the body. And the answer, this is fear matrix running through you. We're not here to cause anything. The only thing we cause is your acceleration to your own timeline of you if you come to accomplish the return to the freedom as sovereign being. Mm -hmm. That really is the bottom line. That's my word for next year, by the way. <laughs> Empowered and sovereign. Yeah, I am all about yes. it. I'm ready to put on that crown, girl. <laughs> Absolutely, let's put on. <laughs> and so taking it from the personal to the more global, what is going on on the planet right now? So let's talk about planetary changes, what's happening, and are there planetary changes to come? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Planetary wise, we are witnessing, experiencing and living historical time. Mm. Really much so. And if you look at the significance of historical time, we're looking at the dismantling of a old paradigm structure that can no longer be sustained, whether it's education, medical field, institution, all archetypal pattern to society belief systems government and so forth. So what we're looking at is, especially in December, because we are mid-December on, we're like what's called in a very contracted wave right now. It's like the analogy of the funnel. We are reach a very specific aspect of a funnel of energy. It's still very compressed. And what does it mean? It means that everyone on the planet is giving an opportunity to purge, cleanse, 
resolve deeply what they've been carrying within themselves for thousands of years. Or it can be just from past, from your childhood that anything that creates a resonance of barriers of blockages. I see it multiple times over and over and over, and I hear it all the time. I do sessions day in, day out. That's particularly what I've been doing nonstop for the last year because the needs are so great. People want to understand, feel like my life is no longer validated. That aspect of your life is shifting. What you have done, whether it's career, family, spiritual growth, spiritual development, or even society-wise, everything you've accomplished, nothing is in vain. It's still part of you. What we are witnessing, experiencing, is the complete shift of a new paradigm of reality coming in, a return to what we call a return to living by the essentials. Uh, to identify yourself as a soul having a human incarnated life on a planet that has waited thousands and thousands of years to reach to that point of finally entering the organic timeline of ascension. So while we're here, we're here to re all of us. And ascension is simply levels of consciousness that we're moving into. It can be simply from, I recognize myself as a divine essence of light. I recognize and I am connected to the entire ecosystem of life on this planet. My action will affect you will affect my garden, will affect the quality of the air, will affect the quality, my action, my decision. So we're living more consciously. Where do you invest, baby, and everyone? Where do you invest your energy the most in and at? Energy to your energy, your thought forms, your thoughts every day, your emotion, your co-creative faculties. Where are you? And it's an invitation to step into what we call a higher vibrational state of presence. Are you present to your life? Are you here? Or are you so pushed back in the past or over projected into the future? Are you present here? So what we're experiencing right now is the tail end of a very, very complex cycle that is fighting. And we can feel like the push and pull very much so, whether it's political, whether it's employers. I see that a lot of people who have careers, when my employers push me in that direction, they're forcing me to do this. They're forcing me to take action. Well, it's against my will, right? We can feel like we are at a tail end. It's like really much the funnel. Those experience. organizations are falling apart. I just read Everything. an article yesterday on the Boy Scouts. I was like, Oh my gosh. Really? How, yeah, terrible, uh, terrible abuse situations that have been going on since the 1960s and, you know, just heartbreaking stuff. And so, yes, I agree. All of this, um, boy, it just comes up. So I'm going to say it. All this patriarchy is being dismantled and the paradigm that we've bought into and given our power yes. over to saying you work, you know, full steam ahead when really it has not been working. And so, with all of the chaos, because there's a lot of chaos and uncertainty going on with these planetary changes, how can people keep themselves balanced? How can they keep themselves really on their purpose and sort of in an expanded, widened back place so that they can receive the light and be, be the light out into the world? Yes, absolutely. And that's exactly the premise of all of it. Remember that you are a light. You're here to anchor new light, whether it's in your world, your paradigm, your family, your home every day, and even in the ley lines and the grids of the earth. And to recognize that I am a being of light, I carry within myself great power. I carry within myself great light. Mm -hmm. Just imagine affirming that every day. I recognize that I am a being of light and I carry within myself great power. Now, the good news is that here's the thing. With any very contractive waves, there's a counterpart to it, which is the expansion. 
2022, from what have been shown, this is not a prediction, it's simply an energy field, it's simply an, a vibration. Around Thanksgiving, I've been shown for three days in a row the same vision. I've seen a pathway opening through 2022 and the pathway and an emanation of golden light. So the golden energy is also revealing higher truth, higher wisdom coming back to the planet. It's the golden ray of enlightenment. And what I was shown is that be patient because the expansion wave that you've been all waiting for are coming in. There's another junction of change on the planet between 2022 and 2023. And it's gonna start, I would say about mid to the end of March, between the end of March going into April, we're gonna feel that. So the first three months is about clearing. We're still gonna feel the effect. We're still gonna feel like we need to clear to stabilize ourselves. But I can feel there's something that is shifting. There's another shift, a planetary shift coming through around that time. Now remember that we are living in organic timeline. It's more powerful than the prediction. It's more of a direction, a frequency direction. So I can feel that something pivotal is coming in. And 2021 has been a year of absolutely deep purging everywhere everywhere around the globe. The earth has been into a birthing process. She has been in contraction for quite a while now. And right now she has very strong contractive wave within her body, even within her heart's chakra. I can feel it to the grids, the planetary grids. There's more changes coming through. So she is getting ready for an expansion. Now, Trust the process. Remember that you are part of this beautiful, powerful, divine evolutionary process. People ask me, will I look the same? Will I lose my body? Will I lose myself? And I always said, remember, you got nothing to lose at this point. You got everything to gain. Now we're getting in light. We're getting in momentum. We're getting in power. We're getting into reclaiming our rightful place among the stars as cosmic, new, conscious human being. What about relationships too? Because I think there's been a lot going on there. And I understand in astrology recently, and I've read some about astrology next year, relationships, relationships are going to be brought to task in the sense that what doesn't work will be eliminated. And there may be marriages, there may be divorces, and what works obviously will be brought in um, or made stronger. What, what is your sense of all of that? Well, astrology is a way that we call it a point of reference. You know, they said, here's a prediction. Here's the pulse of what 2022 will feel like. Well, everything is in flux. Everything is shifting and changes. I would say, take it with... Uh, open mind with a state of receptivity. Yes, everything will be shifting again. Communication, relationship to self. Many people will perceive themselves differently. The way they perceive themselves, their role in society, role on the planet and even in a cosmic level. So of course, at home with a marriage or long-term relationship, even between parents and children, friends, it's already happening right now. There will be those within our homes or family structure who will cling on to all structure out of fear. And also they don't understand really the transformation behind it. So let's be flexible, open, teachable and receptive for 2022. Allowing everything to more organically expand and i'll tell you the wisdom i gave to a client about two days ago it says it is never your responsibility to convince other that we are heading into a spiritual growth allow their soul allow their higher self to teach them hold them in the highest light by respecting also your space 
with authenticity to, you, to yourself. It can be an authentic embodiment of your own spiritual growth. And what happened is that you're becoming an example. You're leading others by example. You never have the responsibility of the burden to convince anyone. Like this conversation, there is no convincing. It's an exchange, right? And it's going to talk to you, talk to everyone, to what you need at this point. And then it will move on with you and evolve with you. So relationship, yes, it's all part of the structure that we are redefining. I've seen that in marriage, you know, either the spouse, the, the wife or the husband, one of the spouse is usually more awakened than the other. It can be equal. But one thing that we're going to see much more coming up, especially a little bit later on in 2022 and 2023, is as a lot of people who initially they may have resisted will start to get breakthroughs and says, you know what, I am at loss right now. I need guidance. Can you help me? How did you know? How how did you hold your space all this time? It would say, okay, I'll, I'll teach you. I'll guide you. So you can also be in that space. And there will be those who will say, I refuse because it is part of their soul journey to evolve in a more dualistic third dimensional plane of reality. Yeah. You know, since I've been immersed in this whole extraterrestrial universe upon universe world, I, I have been most recently contemplating God because before, before extraterrestrial awareness in my world, it was, you know, source energy, God, God us all that is things like that. And I knew that the idea God, the energy is infinite, but I also feel like it's changed. Be so is there a God? That's my question. How are we all connected throughout the universe and the universes and the multitudes of individuals, we can't even call them people, I don't know what they call themselves on their planets, plus the parallel universes, uh, metaverse, multiverse, what kind of God or gods are there? And can you address this from a limitless cosmic perspective? Absolutely. From a limitless intergalactic perspective, we know that we are part of the one aspect of supreme source, and we call supreme intelligence, supreme creative intelligence. This is how we perceive it. If we think about, this is part of the change in paradigm, the reversal of thought system. We're moving beyond, especially people on the planet, you're moving beyond religion factors, implemented structures of believing God or the gods versus you. There's a, a separation, there's a distinction between the two. And the way you are worthy or the way you present yourself, you're living an exemplary in life that maybe help you to get worthy of that connection. <laughs> I can <laughs> just to talk about I'm choking. We are transcending all of this because we understand that you carry divinity within you. You are an aspect of all there is, the multi-creation matrix of life. So your soul is internal. You are an internal soul. This incarnation, this life that you're in right now, it is just a spark, an aspect of the multifaceted aspect of the vastness of your being. You have a higher soul, a supreme higher soul. You have different level to you. You are part of the fabric of space and time of everything. We always says the stars are within you and you are part of the stars, so to speak. So the concept of God, instead of playing to semantics, God, creator, deity, supreme source it's more of an experience come back into connecting and ask your internal being within you show me my connections to omnipotence omnipresence all there is i'll tell you out of experience i have been to the void consciously consciously i have been to the void many years ago when i was in sedona 
during a training, and I don't take training too many times, only when I'm very guided to. I was in a training. This lady who observed me the entire time for three days, didn't spoke to me, didn't speak to me, came with a piece of paper. And she said, creator, give me permission to give you this. It's a mathematical formula that you never, never permit to show. But if you connect to that, it's going to take it's going to take you back to the point of creation. So I accepted the invitation. I was very curious. And I'll tell you what happened. I look at this very complex, very, very long mathematical formula that has nothing to do with science and books. You can tell that it was from a different level of intelligence. I imprinted into my consciousness and I ask and I follow this formula. And what happened? is I was traveling through white tunnels, like spiral and spiral of white tunnels, contouring this aspect of creation, what we call the physical creation. It contains countless of dimensions, worlds, planet, systems, all of it. I exited it and I entered the void. And in that space, my identity as I am an octal hybrid. My name is no longer existed. I was part of everything. What was that I like? Felt, I felt like I was in the vastness of a an intelligence. There was a presence. Everything. It was everything. Supreme omnipotence around me, and that omnipotence reminded me that I'm a part of you. And you are part of me. And at that moment, Debbie, I was giving a choice. I was giving the choice to continue on at a whole level of evolution. They said, if you accept the invitation, you will no longer come back to the physical creation. It means that I will have left the earth. My body, will, I will have completely vanished into that creation. It's very difficult to explain in words that would make sense to the intellectual mind. But what I understood is that we are so complex and at the same time, the inner universe that we carry within us has the encoded, the encoding information of everything. Mm. And it's so God, again, it's a big label, just as healing is a big label. God to us, it's to entering that space of complete omnipresence, omnipotence, supreme intelligence that permeates your entire being that you are a part of. And then that will be the best way I can explain it for now, for now. Mm, it's beautiful. And you made the choice I, to come back, clearly. <laughs> I did. I did make the choice. I told them. They did tell, if you go any further, then there will be no going back because you're going to transform into a higher, you're going to transform into a higher state. Mm. And I said, and I saw the earth. I saw the earth. I saw my family. I saw what I was come here to do. And I said, there's too much at stake. I have to go back. And they said, so it is. It was done. I was mm. back. So back. it is. Yeah. I know you, you've mentioned previously light language. And I'm familiar with light language. I want to discuss it a little bit. You know, the first time I heard it, I was like, <laughs> you know, really, so for people who are not watching YouTube, that was an eye roll because I watched people doing it and I thought, Lord Jesus, this is gibberish. I remember acting class when I started out when I was younger and we had to do that. We had lines and intentions and instead we spoke gibberish and we were supposed to understand each other. That's what it felt like. But I have since done more deep diving around light language and now I know people who do it. Um, so I'd like you to explain to people what exactly is light language? How is it received by somebody? That's a fantastic question. The light language, again, that's another label. Light language are different form of vibrational languages that depending on what source you're tuning yourself to. Look at the level of diversity of languages on the planet. Hmm? French, English, British English, Italian, Spanish, 
Asian language in different places, whether it's Japanese or Mandarin and so forth. And I'm just extracting an aspect of it. Plus, there's many different levels of dialects on the planet, right? One region can have different six, seven, eight different level of dialects just to comprehend and communicate with themselves. So as above, so below, the diversity of like language is the diversity of different form of vibrational languages. That may sound a lot like gibberish. Some of them is just like sound or like ticking of the tongue. Others like it goes deep to the throat and it almost vibrate into your, your higher heart to the timers. And others are just almost like a melodic, almost like a, a music that comes through. So it depends on which vibrational level you are attuning yourself from. It's as diversified as it is on earth with the different languages. Someone who speaks five, six languages, we were like, wow, that's incredible linguistic skills, right? And the same thing with like language. It's another umbrella that has different vibrational diversity and tones to it. And depending on the source point, you know, if you connect with an let's say in trans-dimensional race that may be talking in a very specific tones that have been very unknown to this earth, that their, these tones will sound very differently to people. How does it speak? It has nothing to do with the intellectual mind. It speaks to your DNA. It speaks to your quantum field. It speaks to your soul. So whenever your people receive transmission of different form and variation of light language. Our loving recommendation would be just receive it, feel it in your body consciousness, let your soul understand and do the decoding. It's really meant at this point for that. Eventually, as we are ascending to a higher level and we are activating other faculties, it may speak and respond differently. But for the time being, this is where it's designed for. Do you sense. speak light language yourself? Oh, I've been negotiating with my team for a long time. When I do session, I will do encoding of light language. I sign it. I can see holographically each symbol and each symbol is encoded in a body template of the client. Now, what I was told is because I am beginning to prepare my throat chakra is getting prepared for me to be a more um, universal conduit, a more vast conduit, where there will come a time where I'll be able to bring form different level of vibrational languages uh, all at once, depending on who we are working with. So it is still in progress. I am still negotiating that with my galactic team. Do you feel, Vivian, do you feel the emotions that other people feel? Like I have this huge spectrum of emotions, deeply sensitive person. I feel great love and passion. I can feel great anger. I can feel great resentment. I can feel great joy. I can feel great laughter. I can feel great passion. I mean, brrr, this huge gamut. Do you, as a hybrid, are you the same? Oh, absolutely. I am multidimensional multi sensitive. I can perceive saltities of variation of energies and frequencies. And this is why what we do it so, we're so effective and potent what we do because I can read someone just like, oh my goodness, it's just their feel speaks to me. I can feel animals, I can you know, feel the trees, uh, the earth, and she's talking. You know that Mother Terra is very a conscious living celestial being. Absolutely. I can feel the planet when they quantumly communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. I can feel like I am evolving more and more at a very sensitive conduit. And it's just, I can feel like my family or is another country and go like, oh, my antenna went on. Okay, it's time to communicate with something's going on. You know, I can feel like people going into different countries or even beyond. I am ultra in that sense, sensitive and being able to perceive I can just read an email and go, oof, there's something behind and a decoding between the lines or even a text message. Go like, okay, I can feel like something is behind. I can feel like the abstract feel like, and I will ask question. 
I am perceiving something. No, I'm fine. What else beyond fine? Talk to me. The fine is the wall. I want to know more. What else beyond fine? And I will dig in, then do some digging to extract that. Oh, okay, this is what I really picked up on. So all of this to say, oh yes, very much so. Wow. And you mentioned quantum. So quantum consciousness, what is quantum consciousness and how does it inform the kind of vibrational shift we're in right now? From our, from our understanding and from my experience, how I live it, uh, again, experiential way of dealing and being in that quantum field. Quantum communication is just an advanced way of communicating, which is transcend the physicality, transcend this third dimensional matrix reality, transcend all of the physical senses. You are truly, it's more in that soul essence, that soul consciousness exchange. Like for example, I'll give you an example. All the planet of the solar system quantumly communicate with each other. They transmit very specific pulses and those pulses convey message. Emotions, they convey words, it convey imagery, it convey concepts and beyond. So I can see that each planet from your solar system has a very unique personality, has a very unique way, and they perceive their roles very differently. And yet they're working together as a synergy in partnership. And all of them are very protective of the earth because they understand and can feel Mother Terra distress, call for help, what she needs when she goes into those contractive waves of birthing process. So the word quantum, quantum in itself, I would say, again, it's a semantics. It's not to be hung on what the definition of that word is. It's more the meaning of the experience behind it. That saltity of soul transmission where you can feel an entire social body communicating and those wave of transmission convey so much information and how you're able to decode those information mm -hmm. and does that have anything to do with the divine matrix i want to know about how we can embrace the divine matrix and utilize it everything is interconnected we don't separate quantum communication from the divine matrix, it's everything is interconnected. It's just like on this earth, we are evolving in a very connected ecosystem of life. So what I do and what you do impact everyone and everything on the, on the planet. The same thing with the sacred divine matrix is we are finally returning, attuning ourselves back to that level of understanding. What's important is spiritual maturity. And we are returning to that spiritual maturity to understand the self-mastery of your emotions, your thought forms, your co-creative power, the impact that you have, the significant also changes that you implement in your life by changing consciously things. So the divine matrix of life encompasses everything. It's the part of all there is. We are constantly profoundly connected that's a profound healing that is going on as well, Debbie, because that completely dismantled the false paradigm of separation, isolation, uh, this planet being isolated on its own into a vastness of creation, which makes no sense, it's pure madness. It's, we're bringing back. And I can tell you there's so many, I like to call them star people, and the extraterrestrial, the star people, wherever they are, there's so many star people who are rejoicing at finally welcoming back the human civilizations as equal, as part of the, the sacred matrix, as part of this expanded collaborative partnership that we're together. We're not isolated, never have been. Mm. I'm currently reading Tom Kenyon's book, it's called oh, yes. Arcturian Anthology. Yes. Man, got a lot of flags in that book. And I want to yes. talk about a passage that really blew my mind because it gave me an understanding about something. So if, if it's okay with you, I'd like to read it. Sure. And we can weigh in on this. So the passage is this, a quote from Tom Kenyon's book. 
Humanity is intergalactic royalty. Altogether, you've been affected by between 23 to 24 different alien civilizations. So you as modern humans possess in the deeper stratas of your unconscious memory, two important streams of knowledge, but the difficulty with unconscious knowledge is that it generates conscious actions without understanding. The two streams that I speak to here are the ephemerals within you. In your prehistory, the ephemerals became trapped within mammals. And so there is a deep feeling of being trapped in matter and a yearning to go home, but an inability to do so. So in your deep collective unconscious, there's a feeling of having fallen into matter and yearning to return home and no way to do so. The second stream has to do with your genetic manipulation conducted by the Anunnaki to make you a slave race. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in your deep unconscious, there was a yearning to be in the right relationship to the gods and a tendency to become subservient and to worship because you do not understand the true reality or nature of the beings you deem to be higher than yourself. Many of the qualities you possess as a collective humanity are the result of genetic giftings. And I might add that some of your conflicts are compounded not only by history, but the predominant alien genetic line that different areas of the world express. Whoa. Yep. Well, that's very easy, absolutely. When it comes down to, and this is something we talk over, over and over and over. In fact, we brushed up on this in a documentary that was recently a part of the Actionary Revelations. It's that this is a really huge reactivation of the complete human potential as cosmic beings. And the Danuki is one race who've done a lot of damage to human beings to be so programmed to say, I need to please, please my boss, be performant for a company, pleasing others, being able to feel like, you know, if I do my part, I'm pleasing the God. What is God or gods in the plural form? We know that in the history of the earth, many other rays have come to the earth with advanced technology that were perceived as God. Look at the mythology of the Greek gods. Where do you think it's come from? Mm. It comes from those ET rays who had come to the earth and perform what seems to be miracles to technology. It doesn't mean they had a consciousness to support a technology, but they were advanced in their way of understanding you know, time travel, multiverse, um, building, elevate, levitation, and all of this, it doesn't mean that you have the consciousness to understand the impact that you have on others and on a planet. And then the gods uh, ask a different faction to build them temples, and if they were not happy, they will get punished. This is part of the huge teaching and relief of the 3D matrix reality, releasing the slave mentality, releasing the separation between higher power and myself and coming back into understanding that you are part of the divinity, you are part of a creation that we perceive you as giants of light that has this, you carry within you soul body of knowledge, skills, infinite knowledge is encoded in the very fabric of your DNA and being able to finally re-identify in such. So of course, that statement or that passage from the book you just read makes complete sense to us because that's exactly what we've been working with people is to reverse that, to be able to empower people. It's the return in terms of re-empowering everyone and remembering deep into our soul blueprint of who we are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which star system you come from. Ultimately, we are returning into that sovereignty as a civilization, as a planetary system. You're returning in a sense of sovereignty. This is why we're looking at historical time right now. There's profound changes behind all of this. 
I think also that piece that he unpacked there, which was what I see a lot with people who, who say express themselves as though I'm different. I've always felt different. I never felt like I belonged here. I, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't relate to that, but I've always felt weird about having a body and there's nothing wrong with my body, but it's like, it has been with me my whole life. This strangeness of feeling almost trapped inside of something. And when he talks about that, I thought, wow, that really addresses why so many people who have this hybrid galactic energy inside of them have this expression that makes them feel really disjointed a lot. Like I'm human, I look human. Other earth people are liking seemingly this experience, but I feel really out of sorts. I feel like a fish out of water. So I feel like it talks, speaks to that very profoundly. And it's not so much, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah, just in conclusion that, you know, this, where people mostly saw this as a difference in them that was a wrongness, I'm understanding through this passage that this is, this is a deep native feeling, this unconscious feeling that actually makes sense. Maybe the original abandonment, you know, of like, I really belong somewhere else or somebody dropped me off here. This is, you know, that it's real is what I'm saying. It's not a wrongness. Absolutely, I agree. It's a leg legitimate feeling and it's complex. Yes, that's a base explanation. The complexity of it is in addition of over so many generational timelines of star seeds coming back from different place within the multiverse. So for example, in addition to that, that's the base makeup from human being overall as a civilization, but your soul comes from a place where your body is light or you reach 12 dimensional level of consciousness. You don't have to function in a very heavy body carbon based bone and muscle and all of this, that kind of vehicle can also feel very different. It feels foreign. There are souls, there are some souls who are formless, but they come back in incarnation and they're kind of readjusting to their vehicle. Like, how am I doing this? How am I supposed to dress, to eat, to function? So that's a profound realization from that statement in the book. At the same time, there's some dimensional complexity to it. Because over time, there's so many souls who have come from different realms and different places that this kind of heavy physical, third dimensional, dualistic reality in a very specific heavy form doesn't exist. Take my case, and for example, it turns, we don't have a muscular system like you do. We don't need that. We don't need to use our mouth and having very complex jaw structure that open the mouth to speak as we are doing holographic transmission of thought forms. Yeah. Much more effective if you ask me. Mm. We don't have those five digits. We don't need to have a tongue. You know, there's different ways that depending on where the soul has evolved to, that it doesn't have the same physical requirements. So that makes sense. And that's another layer I like to add to really validate for people that feeling now it says, remember, you are meant to be, you are here where exactly where you're meant to be. Explore your body, have peace with your body template. Mm. Your body is very faithful to you. Allow it to be a part of your journey, right? Yeah, that's yes. nice. Yeah. Permission to enjoy this, for sure. Yes, yes. Make peace with your body. I may have been a mer people in the past life. I've seen that that people come from that lineage, they have a hard time with their hips or coordination of to walk because they don't have this kind of physical structure. What? They have to learn. Yes. Yes, I've seen it. I work, I work with people, I work with clients where we have to teach the body that they are in a human form and they have to be able to function in this human form. Is that why I have trouble with my hip? It is possible. It is very possible that let's say you were a more people in a past life 
that imprint can be so strong at the soul level that it create a discrepancy with the coordination of between your junction of your hips and your legs. How do you fit in that gravity? How do you walk on land, right? I've mm -hmm. seen that in clients. It's phenomenal what, I, what we see. I've seen a giant incarnated at a soul level. It's a spark emanation of a giant that was maybe eight, 10 feet tall. But in this lifetime, that person was five foot one. Oh. <laughs> so the soul is like it's that big and the body feel this big. So imagine the discrepancy we have to help to say, in this lifetime, your conduit, your physical conduit is perfect for your journey. Okay. And so <laughs> it was mentioned, these latent intergalactic gifts. Does, I can only say for myself, I have noticed, I know what my gifts are, at least what I know, um, clairsentience and claircognizance. And I've had people tell me other things, but I never had experienced them in myself. So I only make valid what I know for myself. But definitely, at least over the last year, I feel that my psychic abilities, and I would have never previously called myself psychic, but definitely feel, is this what they mean by latent intergalactic gifts becoming activated? Or is there something else, some other kind of gifts we're not aware of? It's a great question. It's an aspect of those gifts. And what we call here and on this earth psychic, we will call it differently. It's all your abilities of self-healing, teleportation, uh, deviation, being able to communicate to thought form exchange, what we call telepathy, being able to build with your mind and instantly manifest in space and time that co-creation with that mm -hmm. manifestation mm -hmm. and so forth. Human beings are scratching the, the top of the iceberg. So whether you call yourself psychic, multidimensionally sensitive, energy sensitive, claircognizant, it's just aspects of what is coming back to you. But there will be more. There will be much more. This is also part of the return in terms of embracing your cosmic heritage. Mm -hmm. It's that return of to identify at level. Now for so many people, they will feel like so far-fetched. And we understand that because for how many generations have you been programmed to believe that you are as small as a grain of sand? And that makes us absolutely like, wow, it's, giants okay. be convinced they're so small, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, so tell me, you mentioned this movie project, this documentary called Extraordinary, The Revelations. What, what, tell me about the film. What's your role in the film? Why is it exciting? Where can we see it? All that stuff. Yes. The first initial digital release was on November 30th. As of right now, there's different channel. Amazon Prime, Apple TV, Vimeo, and there's other channel then then the documentary is available. Mm -hmm. There will be a second digital release, I believe potentially in January or February, where there will be more channel available. But right now, even just from Amazon or Apple TV, you can have access. This documentary for me, it's been many years of, of working with J3 Film. It's been really wonderful to see everyone shifting, evolving, you know, even spiritually, energetically and how much we have gone very close with each other. What is unique about this documentary? This is not about bringing new information or new historical facts and digging into the White House for secret documents. This is beyond this. It's how the, the vision of the director, John, and also the co-producer, uh, Jack, Roth, Lori Weiner, and also um, Jamie, their vision that combined and John Sopel, the director has a very clear vision. He wanted to create a documentary that brings different paradigm together in a secret triangle of integration. So it explore, you know, negativity, positivity, and also neutrality and how ascension is being impacted as a result of this. My role is part of the ascension, the, the ascension paradigm, obviously. 
when he talked about the hybrids, when he talked about the star children, when he talked about the indigo children. So my part is to introduce to the greater public, what is it that I'm really here to do and what is it this is going to. And it really removes the fear. And we're here to dismantle the fear energy. And what I love about my segment is that there's also Mary Rodwell part of this. And her and I, without even knowing it, without even knowing it, what she's saying about the children she's worked through, hypnosis and star children, crystal children, and what my collective and I have to say, very complimentary. So you can tell that um, you go through a journey. It's a conscious journey. Some of them are going to go, what? I'm just going to go, oh, I connect to that. Well, ultimately, it's the perfect equilibrium. It's allowing everyone to be able to comprehend, extract what they need. And when you may go back to the documentary, maybe a few weeks later, a month or two later, and it will speak to you differently because something in it evolves. And that's why I like it's the balance the balance in it and i have clients making comments about it i have clients telling me vivian when your team and you come i can feel you're just expanding that consciousness you're releasing the fear from what has been presented and whether you call yourself a whistleblower ex-military really prestigious phd doctor ultimately you have to listen is that are you here to help others to step into their power, help them to comprehend, to better understand who they are. If not, well, then you're healing also from all the paradigms. Yeah. And we bless you for it. <laughs> well, this is Dare to Dream, Vivian. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams or goals? My dreams, my, my next big goal, and I'm working around the clock, so to speak, with my collective and beyond. Um, I would love to open my own school of teaching i would like to gear up into more teachings um i know that we're very much healing oriented and we do a lot of online events and all of this and then next year 2022 i'll be more mobile there's many conferences i'm going to be in person to i'm going to be giving lectures uh, an opportunity to work with us also with many many conferences coming up um then we want to advertise everything on the website on the calendar of events um, I did recently an interview slash lecture for a quantum symposium that's coming up in January between the 20th to the 30th. It's going to be online. But after that, starting in February, I'm going to be traveling. I'm going to be in California, New Mexico, um, Sedona, Mount Shasta. I'm going to be in, in different places ah, oh to be hands on. Yes, yes. Beautiful. Yes. And so, and I hope you'll visit me. <laughs> so, where people who are interested want to find you online right now before they can meet you in person, it's infinitehealingfromthestars.com. Is there any other place you want to send them that would be good for them to connect with you? Fantastic question. I, we feel that the website is very conducive. On the website, you can have the press page where you have the documentary. You can have also the book. We have all the links of social media, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. YouTube, we have a special segment on the website about our meditation, our interviews. We offer monthly free meditation as a supporting tool every month. All the videos will be there as well as on the YouTube channel. So I feel like the website is very conducive. We have also our beautiful copper store that my husband creates. Uh, it's beautiful creation of the Archangel Michael pendant that we talked about. Very powerful technology. And they're very potent. It's incredible how much it expand your own field, how much it expand your own possibilities. So everything is there. That would be a great point of connection. And we also do have a contact us that you can send us email directly. Thank you for coming on the show. I've really enjoyed this time with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. We collectively enjoy explicitly our time together. Mm. And I'm very grateful for you and everyone listening, of course.
Beautiful. I end today's show with this quote from Dr. Suzanne Lai and the Arcturians, which is, once their consciousness resonates to the fifth dimension, they will be free of the time and space that separate their many incarnations. Subscribe to this number one weekly transformation conversation, Dare to Dream. And next week, my guest on the show is Morgan Daimler. She's a world-renowned, prolific author who sees and speaks to fairies and fae and elementals. She's a witch and a priestess, and she's written some of the most extraordinary books. I'm very excited to feature this level of conversation, because as they say, once you open up to the world of UFOs and extraterrestrials, all this other stuff comes in like fairies and fae. So we're going there, folks. Join us. Thank you for being with us today. And remember, don't just dare to dream. Dare to create all your dreams, this world and beyond, into your reality. <laughs>